you're going to do Faraday's law of induction. So we're going to ultimately try to find out uh, what is the induced EMF when a uh, coil goes through a magnetic field. So what we'll need in order to do this is uh, this whole setup which we've got right back here. So we have uh, the actual coil itself attached to this arm. Then we've got these plugs which go in feed into the computer so we can calculate the voltage. Um, we've got this magnet set up with these two plates so that we can approximate a uniform magnetic field right in the center. Um, we've got the rotary motion sensor so that we can tell what the angle is that this bar is sweeping through as it goes back and forth. Um, we've got the LabQuest hooking up to the computer for all our calculations and measurements and the whole armature to keep everything in place. So with that, I think we are good to go. All right, so let's see here. Before we do anything else, we wanna make sure that uh, we know the center of mass of this bar. So in order to find the center of mass, what we need to do is uh, basically just figure out where this thing's balance point is. So I have an idea of where it should be, but I'm just trying to make sure. It's gonna be right around here. So I know that it comes to this point. So what I wanna do is go and measure from the pivot point up at the end here where it attaches down to this bolt where it balanced off. From center to center, that is uh, almost exactly 10 and a half centimeters. That's the length of the pendulum. That's the length of the pendulum, exactly. The L. And then we also need to figure out the mass. So we bring this over to the scale. And we get a mass of 79 grams. So also make sure to take that number down. So now we need to make sure everything's put back as it should be. So I'm going to plug these wires back in. And now we also want to make sure that when the pendulum passes through the magnetic field, it's going to go through without hitting the magnets on the side. So we just need to adjust a little bit. And you also need to adjust the height. So this looks good. The height looks okay down here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so the only other thing we need to record are the number of turns in the coil and the area that are in these specifications. Okay, so the number of turns is going to be 200 turns right here. Um, and then we've got the dimensions of the coil, which are going to be... So that's what we use in order to get the area that's going through. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. So we've got that taken care of. Um, so now this is all put together, so we don't have to worry about that part. Um, okay. We've got the magnet set up. Uh, we've got the voltage probe already all set up. So we're good here. Uh, Open logger Pro, we want to set the sampling rate. I think rate. you need to measure the magnet too. Yes, yes, thank you. We need to figure out the magnetic field that's in between these uh, two plates. So we can use this machine here. It's going to give us a number in millitesla. So anytime you do a calculation and you want SI units at the end, you need to convert that to Tesla. So if we look right in the middle, we get 80. About, about 80. About 80. Yeah. 80 millitesla. And now we should be set to go ahead and get this all set up. Right? Okay. So I'll close this out. Uh, open logger pro, we need to set the sampling rate, so I'll just double check this. Experiment. And then uh, detection. We'll need to set the sampling rate to 200 samples per second. We can take that to 200. Uh, the duration or the sampling time we're going to set to 20 seconds. Okay, so that takes care of that. 
Um, we also want to make sure that these values here are zeroed. So in order to do that, we go up to this zero here, set zero point. Uh, we can do that for both sensors. So wands at equilibrium over here, uh, the voltage should be reading zero, so now we can just OK. And that takes both of those numbers to zero. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, now we can click collect. But before we do, I'm going to make sure that I have everything all set. Uh, OK. Uh, once you see the green collect button on the menu bar, turn into the red stop. The angle reading is zero on the screen. Rotate the wand to some angle, so I'm going to pull it back. And then let it go. Then I'll click stop on here after a few swings. We'll get two graphs. One for voltage versus time up here and another for angle versus time down here. And then we can play with the scales and make sure everything looks clean. So now I'll hit collect. So see this is going. Pull the wand back. Let it go through. And now we've got a few nice runs, so I can hit stop. So if we look at these two plots of potential and angle on the same time scale, we can see that if we look at one cycle, so going from the maximum position back here of the pendulum through and to the other side, when we're out here, there's no induced voltage. And then once we start to enter the magnetic field, we see that there's a spike in the voltage. We have some induced EMF. And then at the center, when this pendulum's right in the middle, there's no induced voltage because there's no change in magnetic flux. Then as we start coming out, we have another spike, but in the opposite direction this time. And then once we reach our peak up here, we're at a point where there's nothing changing, there's no induced EMF. And then here we start to come back into the field, we cross at zero here, and then there's zero induced voltage up on top, just like there was on the way in before. Okay, so with all that in mind, we're able to use uh, the equation we learned in class to figure out what is the induced EMF here. And then we're going to compare that to what we've measured. So we've got a theoretical value and a measured value that we can then compare. So in order to get our measured value, what we're going to need to do is go in here and highlight from where we first begin to enter the field to where the wand is completely in the field. That's why I left down after. In the second one? No, no. Oh, bring, right. that, bring that cursor yes. down. Yes. Okay. okay. So now we've got this all highlighted. Now we can go to Analyze, and we will look at Statistics. And so we see this uh, mean value here, this 0 0.1107. So that mean is going to be voltage. the average value of the voltage in this interval. So that will be the average EMF or the average voltage for that period. Straightforward, easy enough. Yes. Um, then what we'll want to do is uh, fill in the rest of this so that we can calculate what we would expect the induced EMF to be from, uh, from theory. So the easiest thing is to just highlight this whole area once it's zoomed in in order to figure out the time that it takes. So if you do that, we have from this point to this point, the change in time is this delta T, 0 0.0675 seconds. So that's what you're going to use right here as delta t. It's going to be 0 0.0675 seconds. And then for delta b, that's going to be the difference between the field value outside of the area between the magnets and the field value inside. We've measured the field value inside to be 0 0.08 tesla. So that's what we'll have for delta b. And then you can calculate the average area of the coil from these radii, or from the diameters, get radii, figure out the areas. And then you can estimate the EMF from those numbers. And compare. And then compare this, this number be, to the experimental value. This would be pretty close. All right, so now we're ready to take on the second part. Uh, the second part itself has two parts. Um, in one case, we're going to uh, have this attached, but we're not going to have any electrical contact. And so we're not going to have any current flowing through this load resistor. In the second case, we are going to attach the load resistor, and we're going to look at the electrical energy loss that happens as a result of this pendulum swinging through. 
Um, the other case, we're only going to consider losses due to friction in the pendulum itself. Uh, before we do anything else, we first got to figure out what is the resistance of this resistor. So I'll turn on the it's old the multimeter. Uh, yes, the banana plug resistor. So I'll turn on the multimeter, set it to 200 ohms. And now I will take this and try to see what the resistance is across this resistor. We see uh, 4.9 4 ohms. We'll, we'll call it 4.9 ohms. Okay. We also need the internal resistance in the coil. So we can take that by removing everything from the setup and seeing an internal resistance of Six. Yeah, 3.6 ohms. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be the internal resistance in the coil. We need to uh, take the balance point of this. So we're going to find the distance from this pivot point here to wherever the center of mass is. And the way we're going to do that is just by simply balancing this on my finger, seeing where it sits nicely. Now, I can measure the distance from the center of the pivot point to my thumb. We get something around eight and a half to nine centimeters. Okay. Yes, we get 8.5 centimeters for the distance from here to the pivot point. So now we can also take the mass of this, the, the total with the banana plug plugged in as well. So I'm going to go over the scale. We get uh, 92 grams. 91, 91 grams. Okay. So now we've got that taken care of. Uh, we'll look into the energy loss due to friction alone, first of all. So uh, we've got this part taken care of. Uh, remove the voltage probe connectors from the wand and plug the load resistor with one of its plugs out to the side and one plug in the wand. So we'll take these off. I don't want them to get in the way, so I'm just going to hang out to the side a little bit. And then I'll plug this in so that only one of the prongs is actually attached. So the reason we're doing that is because we still want it to swing the same way it will when this is plugged in fully, but we don't want any current going through there just quite yet. So now that we've done that, uh, we need to connect the voltage probe terminals across the banana plug resistor, making sure that the circuit is still open. So now we'll take these plugs we just got out of the way. We will put them back into the banana plug plug. Drop here and that drops back here. Okay. The experiment doesn't work as well if we've got these plates attached. So we we'll want to take these plates off and make the gap as tight as possible for his point. So now we we'll need to adjust this gap to make it as tight as possible to get a nice strong magnetic field in the center. Okay, and then still swings through nicely, so we're okay. Just make sure that these are flexible. Yeah, make sure this isn't gonna do anything to the way that this swings. 